Okay, so welcome everybody to my session, Image Analysis 4.0, New Capabilities in Computer Vision. It's a pleasure to be here uh, in the Global Azure uh, Varsov. Uh, so I'm saying hi from the neighbor country of Czech Republic because yeah, uh, I am Mexican, uh, Microsoft MVP in AI developer technologies and Azure, uh, but I'm currently living in Slin uh, which is in Czech Republic because I am pursuing my PhD in artificial uh, intelligence. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the latest, uh, let's say, features that were implemented just a couple of months ago in, in March with the public uh, preview release of the computer vision uh, cognitive service so there were a lot of features that were uh, added and mainly all of them are based in the uh, Florence project that's the let's say internal uh, code name for for those uh, kind of models they are uh, let's say that they are or they belong to the uh, category of the large language models and Essentially, they are quite powerful uh, because the way they were trained. We, I, I will talk a bit uh, about it, okay? So, uh, well, yeah, uh, here you have some link where we can uh, chat later, discuss if uh, you want to connect, happy to do it. Um, especially in the topics of uh, mobile applications development, cloud computing, and of course, artificial intelligence. So. This is our uh, agenda. First, we will talk a bit about this uh, project, Florence. Then uh, we will discuss uh, about the image analysis 4.0, what are the features. Then we will explore each of them. We have uh, more or less uh, time. I think it's the right time to, to do uh, some demos for each one. There are six, basically. And then I will share some uh, link, uh, some helpful resources that can be interesting for you. Of course, if you have any questions, any, please uh, write them in the chat. Uh, sometimes I need to wait for some process to finish or while the page is loading. So uh, I might answer some of them uh, while uh, we are waiting or also at the end, of course. Okay, so let's get started with the project Florence. Just give me a second because I need to organize myself. Okay, so um, <clears throat> starting from this version 4.0, this is the first time that the Cognitive Services for Vision uh, has launched uh, something called Large Foundational Model which is the Project Florence. Uh, recently, there have been a lot of uh, research papers uh, by Microsoft, by the Microsoft research uh, team. And uh, essentially, this, this, this project uh, has been trained with massive amount of data. Uh, uh, essentially, there, there, there were billions of text to image pairs. And this project Florence is known as a multimodality model. Uh, why is it called multimodality model? Because essentially uh, the, the model can perform uh, text and vision, uh, let's say uh, capabilities or uh, analysis. How this model was, was trained, how, how Florence was, was trained? Typically, let's say, the, or the typical uh, machine learning uh, project is trained with uh, an image and uh, a text, right? Like, okay, uh, in, in this picture, there is an apple, in this other picture, there is a cat, and so on. However, in this new large foundational model, essentially, we have an image, yes, but the text is not 
uh, let's say just some concept, some object. Rather, it is a caption, it is a sentence. What is happening in the uh, in the picture? So we might encounter some examples like uh, I don't know a, a kangaroo sitting on the uh, desert, right? Or a person uh, talking to an audience, and we can add much more information. Of course, there is the metadata. However, uh, basically in the text we add what is happening. So as a result, uh, we can adapt it to, let's say, some uh, individual individual uh, tasks. So this new approach is really good uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, to, to create better models. And we it also shares, for example, with OpenAI, with uh, GPT models, the, the fact that they are really good at a zero shot uh, or one shot learning in, in the way that if it has to learn something new, the, the model, you provide one, two, very few examples and it can gain a lot of knowledge. It can, uh, let's say, infer or, or at the task of uh, inference, it can uh, work uh, really well. Of course, that is a bit uh, related also with the transfer learning, but but essentially, yeah, uh, it's a huge improvement improvement compared with previous version of the uh, cognitive services for vision. On the other hand, uh, it is true that uh, uh, yeah, th these models require a lot of uh, training time and resources. However, as you know, the cognitive services. Uh, are pre-trained, so you can directly uh, integrate them into your application. This is just, let's say, some something that maybe it's important to, to consider about how they were generated. But now we have APIs, we have some, uh, let's say, UI where we can test and use these models into our application. So we don't worry too much about the, about the let's say, resources that. Uh, need, were needed to, to, to train them. Moreover, don't forget that most of these services are also part of uh, Microsoft and, of course, partners, uh, softwares or applications. For example, Word, Office, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, LinkedIn, and platforms like Xbox or HoloLens. Right? OK. So this was just some some background. Now, the image analysis 4.0 uh, features uh, available in Azure Computer Vision include new capabilities for understanding the image content, the context, and also extracting information from images. They are most most of them are available uh, through uh, client SDKs, libraries, library SDKs, for example, Python, C sharp. Uh, C++, uh, or also through uh, some tool known as Vision Studio, which I will I will mention in a minute. Uh, but uh, remember that they are based in uh, Florence model. OK, so um, in, in several of the cognitive services, we have uh, some, let's say, UI, some website known as Studio. So we might have the language studio, or in this case, vision studio. It's a website uh, where we can try many of the capabilities of uh, image analysis uh, 4.0 quickly and easily. And all we need is, that, is a web browser. We don't even need an Azure subscription because uh, they are, uh, let's say, ready to, to test for, for testing. Of course, we would we will be provided with some images, with some samples. We can bring our own. We can uh, let's say choose our own pictures, and it will work. Uh, however, there might be some services, some capabilities that we require a uh, an Azure subscription because uh, yeah, we 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 would like to let's say use our own 
pictures. Maybe we want to train some models. So for that, yes, we do need the 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 the, the Azure subscription. Okay. And yeah, I, I will show you in a minute this Vision Studio portal, uh, where because we will test some of these uh, capabilities. Sorry that this one is in Spanish. I forgot to translate it. But okay. So what are these? So we have captioning, dense and dense captioning. We have video summary and frame locator, model customization, image retrieval, background removal, and of course, previous capabilities have been improved. The previous version was 3.2, if I remember correctly. And now we have the public preview uh, 4.0. All of them but the video summary and frame locator are available through SDK 4.0 and also REST APIs. Only this one, video summary, is available in Vision Studio. Yeah, of course, Frame Locator as well. That, that one works with a video, but that one is available only in uh, Vision Studio. So let's get started with our first uh, capability that we are going to analyze, which is captioning and then captioning. OK, so first of all, uh, what is captioning? Uh, basically, uh, it's a feature that provides a single English sentence that describes uh, what is happening in the picture. This sentence makes sense. Uh, and let's say it is a, an, an outcome of the training process. If you remember, I mentioned at the beginning that the Florence-based uh, models were trained with uh, pairs of image and text. And the text were actions or what is happening in, the, in, in some picture. So this outcome, let's say, is more or less uh, predictable that it will happen because you are training with something. The output is also in the same, let's say, scope. So yeah, uh, and when we use, let's say, the REST API or some SDK, we will get Yes, one caption and also the confidence level, let's say some confidence score. And even though it is not depicted in this slide, we also get a metadata about the file, about the version of the model that we are using to perform the image analysis. Then we have dense captioning. Well, dense captioning, as you can uh, see in this slide, is basically multiple uh, captions, right, for an image. So because in one picture, it can happen. A lot, a, a lot of things can happen, right? So you can expect that in dense captioning, we will get bounding boxes, right, bounding, bounding boxes, uh, and the specific caption, like, for example, person holding a spatula and some uh, bounding rectangle. Uh, a girl holding a hula hoop, and then also the specific part of the picture where this action is happening, and the, the rest, right? So let's uh, test uh, this one uh, with the different, let's say, tools that we have available. So I will start with the, uh, let's say, let, let's get started with Vision Studio. Give me a second because, uh, yeah, okay, here we have. All right, so we are in the Vision Studio portal. And in this case, uh, well, yeah, it's already connected with my Azure subscription. But as I said, we can test this one without uh, the need. So we go to the image analysis tab. Okay, I might increase size. Good. And we have uh, captions to images and dense captioning. So I will test this one, add captions to images. And yeah, we can, for example, provide our own um, picture, our own file. So let's try, I don't know, this one, for example, right? And we will get some general uh, description of what is happening. Let's say it, it focuses the attention 
let's say, on the main idea behind this picture, which is a man walking a dog on a leash on a street. However, of course, maybe a lot of other things are happening. So if our purpose is to uh, detect the different uh, things, occurrences that are uh, happening in some photo, then we would use the dense captioning uh, capability. Of course, uh, well, this is Vision Studio, but we can also, um, let's say, use the SDK or some REST API. I will show the code in a minute. And this is the JSON that we will get. As we, as I said earlier, you can, besides, of course, the caption result, which includes the text and the confidence score, you can also get the model version and also the metadata, for example, the uh, size of the photo. But if we go back and now select the dense captioning and let's choose the same picture, okay? So now we will obtain different, um, let's say, uh, Caption, right? For example, a yellow taxi cab on the street, and you can see that it is highlighted, right, on the on the left. Uh, a man walking. Okay, yeah, this is the general one, and in this case, it selects the whole picture. Okay, good. But a man walking on a street, only that specific uh, caption, and then we have right a black dog walking on the street. Yes, that is also possible, right? And each of these captions include a confidence score. So maybe you are more interested in the ones with the uh, highest uh, value. Yeah, and you can also see the bounding box. So it's up to you how you are going to use them. Well, yeah, so this is just an overview of the, of the capability. But, uh, okay, I will show you, I have here a .NET MAUI application Right, but I am testing it on Windows. Uh, but in this case, I am, uh, let's say, using the Azure AI Vision SDK. Let me just increase the size, right? So yeah, I, I installed this NuGet package, which is in preview, but yeah, we can uh, still uh, use it. And I have one method, which is uh, analyze, analyze image. Yeah, this one. So I connect to my uh, to uh, to sorry, I, I create a vision service options. Yeah, so this is my uh, endpoint. This is my uh, key, right? I will <laughs> delete and regenerate a new one, right? Of course, I did this already in the Azure portal, right? Just create the the classic cognitive service or vis uh, vision uh, resource, right? Then we just provide. Okay, well, this is the file. This is the image source. Uh, I ask the user to select a new one. Actually, maybe, yeah, you can see here. So I ask, okay, select a picture. So let's select, uh, okay, let's do a new one. For example, this one, right? And then we uh, open that file. And here, for example, in the image analysis options, I can choose uh, what uh, capabilities it will use. In this case, I am using caption dense captions, and also text. Because, well, this one, we will explain later, but it is basically the OCR capability, right? Optical character recognition. And you can see that, for example, in this case, uh, yeah, it, it also has some written or handwritten text. Anyways, we uh, create an instance of image analyzer. We provide the analysis options, the picture, and the service option. This service option, of course, is the Azure credentials. And we call the or invoke the analyze async method. Then we will get a collection of objects, right? So for example, there is caption and we can get, there is dense captions collection. So we require a for each to uh, output each of them. And we also have, for example, the lines of text, if there was any uh, text inside the picture. Well, anyways, let's just click this button and you will observe here on the, in the result, maybe I will open the magnifier using a second. Yeah. So here we have, right? We have the main caption. Okay, give me a second, because sometimes <laughs> I'm not very good at using the magnifier, but here you see, 
caption, a node with black writing on it. OK. And then caption, close up of white surface, shadow, black circle, node with black writing on it, and so, and so, and so, right? Different descriptions of what is happening in this uh, image. And you, we also have, of course, the, the, the text. We, we have a list, non-fat milk. Uh, OK, this is the line, and then these are the words. Yes, we can get to, to that level. Yeah, this is another feature, but OK, we are already exploring it, right? And both for the uh, dense caption, we have bounding boxes, right? And also for the uh, text that was detected, right? Bounding polygons. OK. So you see that it is kind of easy, right, to 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 work with uh, with with uh, let's say in our applications with the uh, image analysis service. Okay, so I will come back later to, to this. Okay, so quite easy. Let's continue. And we have a powerful one. We have. Uh, now, uh, video search and summarization. Maybe you remember the, um, uh, what's the name of the service? Uh, video analyzer, right? Well, this one is a bit more powerful because it uses a combination of natural language processing and computer vision techniques to analyze the content of a video. And for the first uh, capability, it can generate a a brief summary of the main points that uh, happen across the video. And there is also a transcript in case that uh, some people uh, spoke during uh, the video. Yes, you can also get a transcript. And related to this, there is also the frame locator. Uh, essentially, we provide some uh, search query. And as you can observe in this example, it is a natural language. The, the same thing that we use to communicate with another person. And we can obtain the specific frames uh, within the video where uh, this happened. For example, milk on the floor. So, and we can observe uh, where uh, this happened. In the previous, you see that someone is cleaning it, actually. OK? Well, so let's demonstrate uh, this one. Uh, just a couple of things, first of all. This feature is only available through Vision Studio. There is still no API. Uh, and second, uh, each of these, there can be some mistakes uh, because, as you know, especially in uh, machine learning or deep learning tasks, there might be some errors, right? There is no perfect model. So, of course, that also uh, is related with the confidence score. And, and you will see in the, in the example, OK? So let's demonstrate this one now. We go back to Vision Studio, and we have under the feature for also spatial, spatial analysis, we have this capability, video summary and frame locator, OK? So uh, I will test it with, um, I don't know, for example, the warehouse. This, the, let's test this video. And well, yeah, we can observe here some, some tests. So there is front test. And let's choose the first one, summarize this video. And we run this analysis, and it can tell us, OK, the recently released video focuses on some noteworthy events happening in a large warehouse. And we can see right, what is there. Person climbing ladder, uh, person carrying a box. Yes, you can see the ladder there. Uh, people using variety of equipment, ladders, conveyors, and so But we can also. Uh, find a specific occurrence, specific frames, and we use some search query. In this case, we, we or at least for this test, we cannot provide uh, something on our own. We still need to, or, or we can just choose, right? Uh, for example, where a person or people are carrying a ladder. OK, so this is running. And we will see some uh, frames, right? There is this one. Let's, I will click on the third one. Yes, we can still see the people or the person carrying it. Let's see this one. OK. Well, yeah, this is not for I don't think there is a person carrying a ladder. There is people on the ladder, right? Uh, yeah, but so probably this one is uh, not 
so good, right? As I said, there can be some mistakes. Let's see, yeah, this one as well. So, so, so you can see this, for example, is very helpful. I was talking to a friend yesterday and she was working for some company and sometimes, uh, let's say something happened and they need to check cameras. So uh, I remember that she told me a lot of times that she spent maybe to check a two hour video she spent the whole afternoon because they knew that they had to find, I don't know, maybe something was stolen or some person, some employee just fell down. So they need to check if this happened, uh, when it happened and why it happened, right? So sometimes they need to, to, to spend a lot of time. And now with these capabilities, it will uh, let's say you can obtain it in a couple of uh, minutes or depending of course on the length of the of the video but now you you cannot you you don't need to spend let's say a lot of time in this uh, uh, an manual analysis uh, tasks now you can let's say switch to some AI approach and you can take advantage of, of your time in a different way, right? More, more productive or, yeah. So you can see this, this is also some powerful capability powered by the Florence model, because as we said earlier, it focuses on actions rather than just objects, okay? Then we have the third uh, feature, which is model customization. In this case, uh, maybe you know uh, about the custom vision service, right? Well, let's say that now this capability is integrated into the computer vision service uh, and the name of the, uh, uh, let's say service is uh, model customization. Uh, again, still in computer vision. I think even that custom vision will be, uh, is, is about to be deprecated because I have seen some uh, migration projects. I don't exactly remember, maybe, maybe uh, you need to check the documentation, but I believe, uh, but yeah, you can even export your computer vision projects to the model customization inside the Vision Studio. So essentially, you know the process, you will provide some pictures, you will label them like, okay, here there is an orange, there is uh, an apple, right? And uh, later we can train a model and we can, uh, 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 the, uh, after the model is trained, we can uh, apply uh, object detection if you we choose that type of project or image detection to new images, right? Uh, and of course, integrated into our applications. Okay, so for this, uh, I will show how it was prepared. So just give me a second, because, okay, yeah, I need to, enter my to my account yes uh, okay yeah probably it took a lot of time yes uh, so I, I can tell you that to test or to work with the model customization you need uh, an storage account azure storage account there you uh, create a couple of containers one for training images and the other one the second one for the evaluation right yeah, just give me one second and I will show you. Oh, yeah, it was in this one, but the other one, just, just a second. Because I choose the cognitive services, but I need to go to the, to the, oh, sorry, to the research group, actually. Okay, so yeah, the first requirement is the storage account. In the storage account, we have these two containers. So let's go, uh, well, yeah, okay, containers, sorry, it's containers. And there we can upload uh, these two, 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 two uh, parts for training images, sorry. Uh, and they, uh, they, they are, let's say, images containing fruits, bananas, apples, and uh, oranges. And then we also provide evaluation images to test our model later after it is trained, correct? Well, the second element that we need is a, a Azure machine learning workspace. I will tell you why. Because here in Vision Studio, sorry, in Vision Studio, we can choose our resource and we add uh, two data sets. 
when we add an, a data set, we need to select, uh, uh, okay, what is the purpose of this data set, image classification or, of, or object detection? These two actually were for object detection. And after we choose the, the purpose, we uh, need to link the storage account. Well, when we do that, we can now go to train a model. And for the model, we require, uh, yeah, okay, some name for the model, and then the task, uh, okay, let's say object detection. We later, or sorry, after that, we choose the training data sets. So, okay, so we said, okay, this is the one, we previously prepare it, of course. We choose evaluation data sets, which are optional, but okay, we do it, good. And after that, we need some uh, let's say a uh, resource, okay, training budget. Well, yeah, training budget is, is basically uh, how much time it will take for training. However, there is something that uh, I did not mention. Um, these data sets uh, need to be labeled, right? And to label them, we need a workspace. So a machine learning workspace. So just let me find it here. Uh, Azure machine learning workspace. Mm. Uh, yeah, not sure what happened. Why I am asked again for the uh, credentials, but uh, okay. Let me see the okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let me see. Workspaces. Yes. Hmm. Probably I need to sign in again. Yeah, it is not detecting here. Okay. Uh, well, mm, okay. I think now it is it is working. So let's see. Okay, I see it. Okay, I see it here. Oh, probably the other one. <laughs> because I, I have I have to well basically in the in your Azure machine learning workspace you create um, a, a label a, a label project right and uh, you will see in in a minute in, in this label project you choose your data set and you if you are doing this for object detection you need to uh, yes, uh, add a bounding box to each of your images. Uh, so the model that we're going to train knows uh, where the, the object is located. Yes, here it is, right? So uh, in this case, this is a very small data set. It's about uh, 50 something, yeah, 53 images. I will show you, for example, this is data. And let's click or maybe on details. Yeah, label, label. Okay, maybe. Okay, ah, yeah, it's here on, on, on the data review labels. Yes, sorry. So. Uh, for example, uh, well, yeah, these are already labeled, of course. But if I choose one of the of, of the pictures, you will see, yeah, here I uh, added this bounding box, and this is a banana. Uh, uh, this is another one. There is apple. There is orange. There is banana, and so. However, right? Why? What if you have one thousand, ten thousand images? You are not going to label manually each of them. Well, you can uh, use something called a machine learning assisted data labeling, which is here. Okay, you, you choose your, your project. You go here to uh, details, sorry, details. And there is the ML assist labeling. So after you train, sorry, after you label two, but the recommendation is uh, more, right? More, more examples. Uh, let's let's say that okay you you train at least 12 images 12 images if you have 
three categories um, or three labels, three types of labels. Try to do also equally, right? Like, okay, four oranges, four bananas, four uh, apples. Then you can use this ML assisted labeling, with, you enable it, and then you can create a compute target, basically a virtual machine uh, or container where uh, there is a machine learning, let's say, a com computer vision task that will use those 12 images that you already provide in order to label the rest of them. This is called few shot learning. And since it is based in this large foundational model, Florence, uh, I, I told you that it is really good at doing this. Of course, if you provide more samples, the uh, assisted labeling will be uh, more perfect or better, right? Uh, but yeah, here you create some, some uh, compute that uh, will do this for you. I already did it, so no need to do it uh, again, but yeah, it, it can help you. But after that, you need to validate uh, that the, the, the uh, let's say, um, the, the task was uh, good, was perfect or no, or you have to fix if there was some error. Well, yeah. And after that, yes, you go to the training and you can use it. When, when you have the model trained, you can now go to uh, image analysis, for example, and we can see detect common objects in images, and we can choose our model, in this case, for example, fruit detector, and I can, of course, choose some uh, picture where, of course, uh, we, we have, let's say, uh, something. For example, let's say this one, which has different products, and it will tell us, okay, here there is an orange, there is an apple, there is a banana, right? It takes some time. Of course, uh, we can adjust this uh, threshold. This one is really low, but if we increase it, we will see, okay, with, uh, I don't know, 74% 70, 70 uh, minimum, there is an apple here, there is an orange here, there is a banana, right? Um, so yeah, uh, in, in this case, we are using our own model, which was trained uh, with our own data. So yeah, we can do this. And you can uh, see that it is quite similar to custom vision, but as I said, it is a more powerful uh, model, OK? So we are running a bit out of time. Then go to image retrieval. Image retrieval basically is, uh, is let's say, similar task to captioning, but opposite, which means we have a set of pictures and we provide a natural language search query. Let, so you ask, tell me or find mountains at sunrise. And then it analyzes your data set and returns pictures with this context or with this meaning. Right, because essentially the search query is the meaning. It is not an object. It is actually uh, maybe something that is happening in the picture. Then again, you, you can test it on Vision Studio with sample images or your own images. So, for example, I already uh, I already provided this. Also, you can see that in my storage account uh, here. There is a container which is known as photo album. And yeah, I already provided this as source for, for my test. You, you will see in a, in a minute. OK, well, this is loading. So I go back to Vision Studio. And then on the image analysis, there is this example, search photos with natural language. So we can uh, try with our own images. We select the storage container. I already, this is the one photo album, but yeah, I can link it to to my uh, storage account where where I have the 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 container photo album. Yeah, and it will let's say use this as data set. But again, I already did it. So for example, here we can search for some custom query, like for example. Uh, uh, Photos of uh, my safari trip, for example, maybe. 
and then we search and we obtain. This is the result. Maybe these were taken as part of um, some uh, Safari uh, excursion. But maybe if we search for something different, like for example, uh, uh, show me, uh, let's say, photo of animals in the sunset or under the sunset, right? And you see, maybe, yeah, there, there, there is sunset. Uh, you can see, maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> uh, but this one were with the most, let's say, probability score or something, right? If we decrease the threshold, we might obtain some other results where there are also animals or where the sunset is happening. But of course, this one, uh, these ones are not, the, the score is not so high because we, as I said, I, I decrease this. But these are like the top ones, let's say, for, for my result. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, now, yeah, now it was updated. So, yeah, this is also some really powerful uh, capability, right? That because we can say just animals, and yeah, we obtain a lot, but we want more context. And the final one, because yeah, we have short of time. Background removal, as the name suggests, basically there is a picture, maybe there is a lot of noise, there is a lot of things happening in the background. They are not important. You want to focus your attention only on something specific. Okay, so you can provide the picture, then you uh, use the background removal, uh, the segment API, sorry, the segment API, and it will uh, delete, it will remove everything else, and you can get uh, the stream or the picture uh, with that, uh, with, with only the center of, of the focus or what you are mostly interested in. And yeah, you can test it also on the Vision Studio, but for this one, I have Vision Studio code here. Yes. So, Let's uh, test it. Here you can observe that there is the analyze image or uh, section, and you will see, okay, there is a picture and the caption, we already saw this one, right? A woman and a girl in a grocery store. Yeah. But now let's apply this background removal. For the background removal, we are using, as I said, the segment endpoint from image analysis. So if we run the test or send the request, we will obtain some picture, but now everything in the background was already removed. And uh, maybe we can use this new image to analyze it again. So now, again, we, we use the image analysis analyze, but uh, we get, uh, let's say, or we, we pass down this, this uh, a new picture to see the, the caption. And the caption is a woman looking at a phone. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe a woman looking at a phone, yes. In the past, it was just a man, a woman, and a girl in some store, right? But maybe that was not the main focus of the picture. We wanted to center the attention on the people, what they are doing, right? So, yeah, that's what we got. Okay, and well, the, the rest is just uh, some other capabilities like image tagging, which is, uh, okay, uh, some detect objects, but also includes actions. For example, skating, skateboard uh, equipment, or, sorry, skateboarding, right? Uh, not, not, not only objects, but also actions that are happening in, in the picture. Object detection, which uh, we have seen this capability before, but it has been improved. Uh, OCR was also there, but let's say this is also improved or better. Uh, okay, smart crop thumbnails, which is a bit similar in, with the background removal in the sense that it uh, gives you a bounding box of the main thing that is happening in the in the picture, and we can get different aspect ratios, right? And of course the people detection, right? And well, we can test all this in Vision Studio. We tested actually the OCR capability just uh, at the beginning of our demo, right? And yeah, essentially, if you want to keep learning, I provide you with this link. So you can maybe take a screenshot of this one. Uh, so yeah, what's new in computer vision, exploring machine analysis, there is a learning uh, tutorial. 
and also train custom model, custom object detection model. The one that I showed you about the fruits, uh, here you can see a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial on how to do it. And yeah, from my side, that will be all. So thank you very much for your time. And now, uh, if you have any questions, I would be uh, glad to try to answer them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Luis, for your presentation. I really appreciate your presentation because it was, you know, full of demos and stuff which I can grab from, from the recording and then try to, to use on my daily basis activities. So really thank you for, for your uh, presentation. I'm looking on the um, comment section, but I don't yes, see please. any. Yeah, I don't see any, any comments. So I believe if uh, anyone will want to to connect with you so probably you can uh, be found on, on linkedin and then maybe someone will will connect you directly i think definitely i will be glad to thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here yeah. thank you thank you for for that you you joined our our uh, community uh, i i hope that we will uh, meet uh, in another meeting somewhere, yeah, somewhere, maybe in yes. Czech Republic, yeah. Yeah, uh, why not? Uh, well, we, are, we are close, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I was last year three times in Prague, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, amazing yeah. city. Yeah, yeah, pro pro probably, probably we will meet somewhere and someone. Okay, so again, thank you, Luis, for for your session, and thanks everybody for being together together with us today. Mm -hmm.